I made a dovetail jig for the table saw. For my next project, I'm going to be making some drawers with dovetail joinery. This is something that's totally new to me. I have never done dovetails before, but I kept seeing this jig for the table saw that looked really cool and I really wanted to try it. So I could not find any videos on anybody making it. I just saw a bunch of pictures. I saw videos of people using it, but not making it. So I kind of just had to wing it. Um, so if you want to see me figure it out, keep on watching. I used half inch MDF for most of the pieces on this jig and I'm going to have a cut list on my website that's going to break down all the different parts of this jig. So I started off by just breaking down all the pieces to what I thought would be good for my purposes. Since all of these pieces look the same, it was important to label all the parts so that I knew what was what. It was at this point that I needed to decide what angle I was going to make the dovetails. I settled on a happy medium of eight degrees. The ramp for the tails is 28 inches long by two inches wide. So to get that eight degree angle, I marked it at its halfway point, which is 14 inches, then took a straight edge from the corner to that 14 inch line. And this is double a one and seven ratio because it's two to 14. So it creates about an eight degree angle. The reason why I marked the angles now is because I'm going to be gluing these two pieces up and I wanted to use a brad nail to prevent any slippage during the clamping and I wanted to make sure I wasn't putting any brads in my cut line. While that was drying, I cut up some more MDF into four inch wide pieces and these are going to act as like the brackets that are in the back holding up the fences of the jig. So I set my stop block to four inches so that I have perfect squares and then I needed to cut these into triangles. So I used my taper jig and I couldn't set it to a full 45. So I just cut off a scrap piece at the miter saw at 45 and use that as a clamp and a stop lock. And then I had two perfect triangles. The tail ramp is all dry and it's time to cut it. So I'm going to use the taper jig again. And I already have those lines marked on there that I did previously. All you have to do is line up the cut line onto the bottom of the jig and then just clamp that into place. So since I had to take away the stop lock on the back of my jig here, because I'm basically cutting all the way to the corner, I just set um, my square to that distance so that I knew how to repeat the cut on the other side. So I just did one cut, flipped the piece over, made sure it was in the same position using my square, clamped it down, and then I could just cut the other side. Making this tail ramp was actually the most difficult part of this jig, the rest was smooth sailing. I had the pin fence and I just cut it in half and then I set the angle of the miter saw to about eight degrees, didn't really matter if it was perfect, to just chop off those ends so that they would meet up in the middle. Now all of my pieces are cut aside and it's ready to assemble. Before assembling though, I took the base pieces and I marked out where the blade was going to hit on the jig. This jig is going to ride in both miter slots so I needed to mark the blade on both sides of the jig. And then I brought all those marks up onto the rest of the pieces so that I would not put any brad nails in any of those locations. The first part of the assembly that I did was to put on the braces that are gonna keep it at a perfect 90 degrees. So I put some glue on there, made sure that everything was perfectly square, and then I locked it down with brad nails through the front. I did that on the pin fence, and then I repeated the same process on the tail fence, making sure that I wasn't putting any brads where I put the marks for where the saw blade was going to hit on the jig. I set that aside so the glue could dry a little bit and then I started working on the runners. So in the past I have used this HDPE plastic runners for all of my sleds and it's worked out really great. So I decided to use it for this as well, but you'll see in a bit that it didn't really work out so well. My first shot, I actually got a perfect thickness and I thought it was gonna work great. So I marked out the whole locations on the piece of HDPE and I drilled a hole that was wide enough that the screw was going to go in all the way so it won't expand the plastic. And then I used a countersink bit so that the screws would sit flush. So then I used a VIX bit and I drilled one hole and then I put one screw into place and then making sure that everything was really square, I drilled the second hole and put the other screw into place. So I've had a lot of success with using HDPE as runners before, so I'm not sure what the problem was, but you can see that it was super bendy and the jig was moving from side to side. I think maybe it was the quality of this one, or maybe it's because the jig was so short and there wasn't a lot of surface area for it to connect to. So I swapped it out to this oak one and then we were good to go. So I decided to assemble the pin jig first, but I used the tail ramp as a guide as to where to put the pin fence. 
This way, it really didn't matter what angles I cut on that tail ramp as long as the angle on the pin vents is installed in exactly the same angle, the joint will go together nicely. And of course, you can't have a glue up without freaking out in some sort of way. So I glued the, all this on and I got it all really even with the lines and I actually used the cutoffs from the taper jig also to make sure that it was fully in the right angle. And then after I got everything into place, I realized that it, there was no easy way for me to clamp any of this down. Uh, so I quickly took it all off, off camera, and I used some um, super glue, some CA glue, along with the regular wood glue to act as a clamp. And then that worked totally fine. And now the tail jig is way easier to assemble. All you have to make sure is that the front of that ramp is flush with the front of the jig and to make sure that everything is nice and square. So I put glue everywhere and I did the whole super glue method. Also, I also used some brad nails to hold everything together. And once everything was set up a little bit, I flipped everything over onto the other side and I brad nailed everything from underneath as well. One last step was to add a little safety feature. So I ran the jigs through the miter slots just to create a saw curve so I know where the blade is going to go. And then I cut up some two by fours to act as a blade guard. So the ones that are on the pin fence, I actually cut an eight degree angle on one of the ends so that when the saw blade is coming out, it's coming straight through the two by four and it's not crooked along with the angle of the fence. The tail fence, I just cut regular two by fours. So I just clamp that into place, let it dry and it's done. So the jig is done. You can see it in the background over there. Now it's time to put some layout lines on your pieces of wood. So anytime I've watched a video on people doing dovetails, I see them taking some calipers and going across the wood to figure out the layout for their dovetails. And there's a zero explanation onto how they got that measurement. So I'm just gonna try to wing it here and figure it out. Okay, so the first thing to do is label your piece. This is going to be facing out. This is going to be showing, so I marked it out. I'm going to be marking the pins first, and I know that there's a huge debate on whether to do pins or tails first. I think with this jig, pins are easier. So I'm gonna come in a quarter inch from the ends and just make a mark. Now, I don't have a set of dividers to divide this up evenly, so I'm just gonna try to do it as best as I can. Between these two pin marks that I made, I have three inches to work with. So I don't really wanna to put too much thought into this. I'm just gonna to try to make it as even as possible. Um, so actually, if it's not perfect, it's totally fine. You can make them as big and small and space them as much as you want. It actually looks more hand cut that way, even though this is gonna be machine cut. So just right around the one inch mark, I'm gonna go a quarter inch around it. And the two inch mark, I'm gonna go a quarter inch around that. So that was just easy to do, even though these aren't going to be perfectly even, this middle one's gonna be a little bit smaller. I could do the math to figure that out, but really doesn't make a difference. Now I just take the mating piece, line it up, make a mark, and that's how high you're gonna set your table saw blade. So you don't need to bring these marks all the way up because you're just gonna have the table saw set to that depth. The only thing you need to do is mark out your waist. So you wanna make sure that you're always cutting on the waist side of your line. All right, let's take it over to the table saw. Okay, so now this is the pin jig. So the reason why I made this shorter and I separated them into two separate jigs was because the distance between, the distance in the front of my table saw here is really only about six inches. If you don't have a job site table saw like I do and you have more space there, I would totally recommend making this into one jig, not two. So when the jig is in the left-hand miter slot, you want to line it up when you're looking down at the piece onto the right-hand side of your cut line. So I'm going to be cutting out this X part over here. So I'm going to line up the blade on when I'm looking down at it, the right hand side of the line. So if you are looking at it on camera, it's actually the left hand side of the line. So don't get confused by that. Um, and then I'm going to make the cuts on all of three of my marks at the same time. And then I'm going to switch the jig to the left hand side and do the same thing. So let's get at it. I almost forgot. I had already set this blade height to the correct height, but um, you have to set your blade height to the line that you made earlier and then you can make the cut. See how 
It is perfectly aligned with that cut line. Now let me continue. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's go. Now that I've defined all of those cuts, I'm going to clean them up just until halfway until I get to that X. I don't wanna go all the way, just halfway to the X, and then I'm gonna cut the other side and clean up the rest of the cut on the other side. So at this point, only half of the tails are cut. Now I'm gonna switch it over to the other side and finish the cut. Now the jig is in the right hand miter slot. So I'm going to be lining the blade on the left hand side of my cut line. Now, fresh off the saw, that is pretty awesome. There's a little bit of tear out on the back end over here, but I think I could easily clean that up. Also, this is the outside face, so this is going to be inside, not gonna be really noticeable. I think that is pretty awesome, pretty quick. And now it's time to do the tails. So this time I did the opposite. I bark my in on the board and I face that up. Then I take the pin board with the mark facing out, facing out, and I line it up against my board here, making sure that it's flush on the sides. And I also use a square at the back to make sure that it's nice and square. And then I'll take a very sharp pencil and making sure not to move the pin board, I'm going to mark out the pins and just trace them. So now the pins are going to fit into these slots over here. So this is going to be the waist creating the one, two, three tails. Now I just need to mark the height. And let's take it over to the table saw. All right. So this is actually where it got a little tricky. So I did some test cuts before, so I know. If you look at this, you can see here is the miter bar, and you can see that the distance from these two slots that were cut are not the same. So I totally forgot to take into account that my miter slots are not perfectly even distance away from my blade. So that means that I'm going to have to change the blade height on either side of the miter slot, which is a little bit annoying. I um, think I'm gonna have to try to figure out something else because getting the correct blade height is actually a little bit tricky as well. So it appears to me that I have a good blade height right here and it's just kissing the line. So I'm actually gonna use a test piece first because I had some trouble with this before. So it seems like it's just kissing the line, but I don't know, let's see. So the problem is that the blade, when you're setting it, it's setting towards the the lower part of the cut. So that's, I'm really happy that I did a test piece. I don't know if you can see that so clearly, but the higher corner of the cut is above the cut line. So I'm gonna lower the blade a little bit. And let's see how that goes. That's closer. I just wanna get it a tiny bit lower. Okay, I think we're good now. All right, now I'm gonna actually cut my pieces. So when it's in the left-hand miter slot, again, you want to be on the right-hand side of your cut line. But this is easier to follow because you could just see that when you tilt it, the angle kind of looks like straight to you. Like that looks wrong, that looks right. So I'm gonna go very close to my line. I do not want to go on my line. And now I'm just gonna repeat the same process for the rest of the tails. All 
Now I'm going to move it over into the right hand miter slot. And remember, because the distance of the, I put this miter slot, you know what actually I could do? I could change the location of this miter slot. Maybe that's what I'll do. All right, not right now, but I will do that. Now I need to change the blade height. As you can see, the blade is now too high, so I need to lower it. I'm going to do a test cut first, just to make sure. Now it's in the right hand miter slot. I'm going to cut on the left hand side of my cut. All right, so this is what the cut looks like fresh off the table saw. And as you can see, if you get really close, um, the angle of the blade doesn't allow it to get close to the line, so you can't clean up the cut. So they do make specialty saw blades that come at a specific angle so that you can get to that cut and you can clean that up. I don't see a reason on getting one of those unless I'm constantly making this joint and I work in a production shop or something like that. So I'm gonna to need to clean these up another way. To use hand saws, a band saw. I think I'm gonna also attempt the router. So let's test it out and see which way works best. The first way that I'm gonna to try to clean up the joints is just by using some hand saws. So I marked the line across on the side over here and I'm gonna clamp it onto my bench. Now I'm not gonna cut on the line, I'm gonna cut next to it because I know I'm going to need to clean this up with the chisel afterwards. To clear off the waste in the middle, I am going to use a coping saw. Again, I am not gonna go on the line because this does not leave a clean cut at all. At least this one and my abilities. Now I'm gonna try the bandsaw. I set up a fence on my bandsaw that's going to cut almost to my line again, not all the way to it. First, I'm gonna to try to clean up that one that I just did with the coping saw, because it's really not so good. All right. And that's still gonna need a lot of cleanup work with the chisel. Let me just get the other end. So I could just go straight away and clean these up with a chisel, but I'm going to try to clean it up with a router. Let's go see. I used the pin board to set the distance of the bit from the fence. Um, you could also use the pin board and see that it's flush. So I think we're good to go there. And this is actually kind of nerve wracking because one slip and I have to start all over again. But essentially what I'm going to do is just ride the piece along, clean it up until I get to the corners. I'm still going to have to clean up the corners with a chisel. Now this is the scary part. So that was a little bit nerve wracking, not really the easiest cut to make. You have to be really careful that the board doesn't pull and catch and just like completely knock off one of your tails. So I'm gonna go clean this up with a chisel now. All right, scratch that, change of plans. I just decided to make a new tail board because I did not like that router idea at all. I did not like making that cut. So I just wanted to make a new board to see how I can chisel straight after using the hand saws or the band saw. I just wanna preface this next part to say that I only did two test pieces before I did this third one that I actually filmed. So I'm saying that for two reasons. One, don't judge me for what you're about to see. And two, I just want people to feel like even if something seems really intimidating to them, like dovetails tend to be intimidating, just go for it and just try it. This is my third dovetail that I've ever done and I'm sharing this with everyone to the world and I think it came out pretty cool in the end. If you're ever scared to do something, just go for it. Being as this was only my third time using a chisel to clean up some dovetails, I have no right to give anybody any advice. So I'll put a link down below to a video that I watched that was really amazing. Cleaning up these tails with the chisel was actually the longest part of the whole process. It took me about 15 minutes to get it perfect. So the pins on the table saw took me about four minutes. The tails took me about two and a half minutes. And then there was a minute or so at the bandsaw. So it took about seven to eight minutes to get it to this point and then I spent 15 minutes cleaning it up. So hopefully with practice, I'll be able to bring that number down and then these dovetails would be super quick. 
Now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's see how the joint fits. Now that was super satisfying. Now after a bit of sanding, now that looks pretty good. All right, so the end result is pretty awesome. I mean, that looks really cool. This is just in poplar. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use for my material for the actual project, but that looks pretty cool. And it's super tight, super strong. Very, very excited about that. So the pins were super easy to cut, so easy. The tails were a little bit annoying. So I still had to do a lot of cleanup work. I still had to use the chisels to try to get it to, to look perfect. So if you're looking for perfection, like machine made perfection, the router is your best choice. This is not your best choice. If you're looking for something that looks like it's hand cut and it just takes a lot less time, then I think that this is a pretty good option. There are definitely smaller jigs out there. Like this is like, it takes up a lot of real estate in the shop. So I know I could have just um, tilted my blade to that angle and done a bunch of different things like that, but I'm always scared whenever I tilt my blade that I'm not getting it right. So if I have these jigs that are at the fixed angle, then I don't have to constantly worry about making sure that my angles are correct. I know that while I was assembling it, I was worried that the angles were correct, but that's a one-time worry over worrying every single time. So just weigh your options there. These are really big jigs. And um, I also, I split them into two because of the, the space that I have and my specific table saw. And if I had the option, if I had the choice, I would prefer to have it in one. So one side being the tails and one side being the pins. That would just take up a lot less room in the shop, first of all, and it would also be easier to use. So overall, um, this was a fun experiment. That's all it really was. So thank you for watching along. I hope that you learned something. I hope you tried something that you want to use this jig or that you don't want to use this jig. And again, huge thank you to this week's sponsor, Woodcraft, where I wouldn't be able to do what I do without them. So from their sled to the clamps to the chisels, they have it all. They have everything that you need for woodworking. So go check out the link down below. And thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.